House Speaker Kevin McCarthy has issued his most explicit threat yet on launching an impeachment inquiry into President Biden. Listen to this. Thanks for being here, Shane. Let me just start with you. I mean, it's there was one impeachment in the first 200 years of this country, and now in the last you know 25 years, we could potentially be looking at four. I think maybe the American people need to understand how significant this is to proceed with something. Who sit in districts that President Biden won? Um, our our excellent Hill team of reporters, too, um, also reporting overnight that there has been this push from some top geo officials to go after the top brass, right? Let's leave the let's forget about the cabinet members. Maybe let's forget about Merrick Garland. And instead, let's focus on President Biden now. How much of that do you think is also political timing, given that we are potentially waiting for another indictment facing former President Trump? Well, I'm sure that's not Joe per se, but this is what people are seeing. And this, I think, is... If we're talking about things from 2015, 2016, that was done before he took office, mm -hmm. that would be setting a very strange precedent. In a FBI that. document, which we should note, the FBI has made clear doesn't refl reflect the conclusions of their investigators. It's merely documenting information from whistleblowers, from others who come forward. Right. So they may and have in other of, information. In that terms refused. of doing the bi the president or son was doing the bidding uh, of Burisma to get Victor Shokin, the prosecutor, fired. I mean, that was a position of the state. Right, it, it was, but it, you know, in, there, but the public should get to know, was there a conflict of interest in that decision made? As we look at everything and where we are right now, there's also a larger question, and we touched on this a little bit yesterday, about what isn't getting done when there is such a focus on impeachment. Do you envision any of that shifting in this Congress? Um, no. <laughs> I mean, I think between the president and the White House and the Republican Congress, not just because of investigations, but just on, on any matter. Florida now um, presidential candidate Ron DeSantis uh, said this about Trump's impeachments and any potential impeachment against Biden. Let's listen. He said they impeached Trump just for a phone call. No. no. And by the way, it's only referring to one of the impeachments. They, they impeach more direct damning evidence were to emerge. It might start approaching similarity, but we're nowhere in campaign. You have some reporting, Shane, about uh, the, the, the layoffs, the firings that we have seen. Um, you saw that overnight. I was also struck by, in some of your reporting, noting uh, a person close work on messaging, not just money. Uh, there's real questions about Coleman, good to have you. Appreciate it. Up next, what the Department of Education do legacy admissions play at Harvard? Well, they play a big role and too big a role, according to these three black and Latino groups that filed this suit. Something that could have major implications at the southern border. A federal judge has blocked President Biden's controversial asylum policy. It's a big co-chair. It is good to have you, Congresswoman. Look, you were critical of the Biden administration doing this a few months ago. You called it a step backward. You said it was choosing to limit asylum against the laws of the United States. So do you agree? Sure. I will note some of your Republican colleagues have also called for legislation like Republican Congressman Tony Gonzalez, who's put forth the Higher Act, one thing that you have supported. We'll get more to what he said in a moment, but just so I can be clear, you didn't want this policy in place. Now a judge is saying it's illegal. Do you want to see it gone or do you want to see it remain? Well, I want to see Congress act. I know, I but mean, the, I, the, we all do, Congresswoman, but this is yeah. really impacting your district. So I'm wondering yeah. if you want it gone or you want it to remain. I, I would like... And that is one of the questions. That's called the Dignity Act, and that puts forward some other policies. I'd like your response to what Republican congressman in your neighboring district, Tony Gonzalez, told us on Monday. This is about a separate issue. This is about those buoys that are floating, put there by Governor Abbott in, in the Rio Grande. Here's what he said about them. Comfortable with them, but he also is, I think, making the same point that you're making. Congress repeatedly fails to act to address this issue. And because of that repeated failure of your body as a whole, do you blame the Biden administration for trying to act uni unilaterally? Mental grounds, not on immigration grounds, saying you're violating the statute, Section uh, 33 of Code 403. The question is going to be up to a judge, right? Are they in violation of that right. or not? I, I wonder what you think about Beto O'Rourke. He has an op-ed in uh, the New York Times this morning. Obviously, he held your seat for six years before you. And he's saying that the president should come in and remove these buoys unilaterally. He says this is the president's chance to show America. The Judiciary Committee, uh, Secretary Mayorkas, will be in front of you and your colleagues this morning answering questions. Republicans have said that he has displayed a dereliction of duty. There have been some calls to impeach him. Do you think there are things that Secretary Mayorkas could have done better? You know, 
border crossings, illegal border crossings on the southern border spiked even more after Biden took office. We've seen them down 42 percent in June since this policy was put in place, but now it may may go away. We'll watch the hearing closely, and we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much. Erica. Bring a lot. Well, the U.S. women's soccer team will take to the pitch again tonight when they take on the Netherlands. It's a rematch of the 2019 final, which, of course, the U.S. won. Joining us now, CNN contributor, host of Took the Subway Up to the South Bronx. It is the poorest congressional district in the country. Uh, we talked about income inequality. He's put forth this progressive agenda. He brought me. Take a look. He brought me a progressive agenda. So Donald he's Trump's making hat, a hard push. Donald Trump's hat saying, make a, or saying is make America great again. Very this interesting play America on that. All right, Poppy. Excellent conversation. Thanks so Thank much. You, Nick. Allison?